you don't ever start a programming language thinking that you'll get this far. You almost start a programming language because it's a hobby and you don't expect it to go anywhere. That's kind of how we started. We were, you know, driven more by the intellectual curiosity back then when we started. And uh, we, you know, we, we broke a lot of new ground in terms of ease of use, in terms of performance, in terms of language design, in terms of tooling. Hi, I'm Viral Shah. I have a PhD in scientific computing from the University of California at Santa Barbara. And, uh, you know, I've always been uh, working on scientific computing and thinking about, you know, how, how can one bring computation and sciences together. I started the Julia project, uh, which was sort of a nights and weekends project. It was in collaboration with uh, Professor Alan Edelman, Jeff Bezanson, um, my uh, UC Santa Barbara uh, uh, colleague, uh, Stefan Karpinski. And of course, uh, so the four of us started this project. There are probably about 150,000 users of Julia worldwide. It is being taught in dozens of universities, maybe hundreds of universities. I kind of find it hard to track anymore. A community of 500 contributors who have contributed either code or documentation or tests to the Julia project. Julia sits right in that mix, actually, in the middle. So it's as fast and uh, it's, it's as fast to use as C or Fortran. Um, it's as, it's as high performance as any of these, but it's as easy to use as Python or MATLAB, for example. So we said we wanted it to be as fast as C, as easy as Python, as good at statistics as R, uh, as good at string processing as Perl, as scalable as Hadoop or R. You know, I got my first computer when I sort of passed my 10th standard. My dad bought one for me and um, I'd learned some basic programming in school and I had sort of you know, I was learning my Newton's laws of physics and all the thermodynamics and, uh, you know, all these various things. And I, I used to enjoy writing basic programs to simulate all these things. Uh, and I studied more programming languages as I went along. Linux had just appeared back, that was 97, I think, when PC Quest put out these first CDs. So that got me hooked on. That's when I taught myself C uh, using GCC back then. And then I studied uh, computer engineering in Bombay. Uh, it wasn't a particularly enlightening experience uh, because of the quality of education. I did not go to one of the IITs or, or the premier institutions. But it gave me a lot of uh, free time to explore, you know, the world of Linux, open source um, back then. And I used to be a Debian maintainer actually. I used to maintain a distributed computing package called Mosix back then kind of was mainly disillusioned. I mean, I, I enjoyed the open source aspects, but not this going to work, uh, you know, f as a programmer at some boring company. So I ended up applying for PhD and uh, my grades were actually pretty terrible. Uh, I had flung many of my classes, but uh, I'd done some research with a professor who used to be at Santa Barbara. So he gave me a glowing recommendation and that m led me to go there and work, you know, on, on scientific computing with uh, Professor John Gilbert and then Alan Edelman from MIT. So, actually, I, I wrote uh, back then, uh, a, you know, in, in my uh, uh, engineering days, uh, an option pricing uh, a code base that became part of what was then coming up to be one of India's first uh, derivatives exchanges at the NSE. So, under their guidance, I wrote some very uh, high quality code base that went in there and kind of pushed me further into this mathematical and scientific uh, world. Um, I, I would say that especially in India where, uh, you know, we often tend to be too focused on, on marks and on, you know, sort of, you know, things that the college emphasizes on, but those are not necessarily the things that are, uh, ne you know, that make you an interesting person or, uh, you know, lead you to do interesting things. So, I, I would say the, you know, the cliched lines of follow your passions and, uh, you know, work on things that you enjoy and, uh, uh, you know, there's, there's, India has enough of a thriving economy in software that if, if you really excel at something, you'll find, you know, you'll not go hungry. Computing is going to be increasingly in more and more devices and more, uh, in more of the intelligence is going to be in the devices. At the same time, you know, more and more of data is going to live in the cloud and is going to get analyzed. Uh, so the future of programming, I hope, is not uh, fragmented that 
you know, like we had that if you want to have prototype algorithms, use Python, but if you want to make it performing, use C. Similarly, if I want to run something on the cloud, use, you know, one kind of programming tools. And if I want something to run on the device, uh, you know, use something else. I really hope, you know, we can see some kind of unification of tools and languages and abstractions and concepts, uh, you know, that will come along uh, in, in this upcoming world. But maybe none of this will happen and maybe it will be something that will surprise us.